I didn't get into bodybuilding to pick up chicks. I was very clear. And, and, you know, (laughs) not not a single, (laughs) not a single (laughs) woman that I've been with. Hey, everybody. Welcome to It's Just Bodybuilding. Big Ron Parlow here with Dusty Hanshaw and the producer, Scott McNally. Remember to like, share, subscribe, comment, and ring the bell. Ring the bell. Through the Knock the bell out. Excellent job. Um, Remember, I am mutant.com. Mutant, proud, hardcore sponsor of the show, Born Hardcore. I am mutant.com, 20% off with Dusty20 or Big Ron20. Use either one. The Patreon. Keep a producer homed. Think big Patreon. Thank you, guys. And uh, you can use either code for mutant and and you get your ISO surge and then you get your all in and then everyone should get on the gear. Okay, guys. How to not be a psycho? <laughs> While in prep. While just in leave prep. us not to be a psycho. Man. Yeah, how to not be a psycho, period. Maybe I was alley-ooping <laughs> that to you and that went perfectly, yeah. right? <laughs> How, how to not be a psycho dot 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 while in prep okay yes. so what where are we starting with this one what are we talking about dusty what are we actually talking about well the main the, the topic kind of arises just going back and forth in conversation with you yesterday with how sometimes clients who are very good will make their preps more difficult by over analyzing um thinking worrying on and on and on and, and I, it's one of the areas that, that I hate as a coach because I try to respond back to them, explain that if you're a psycho, if you're stressing, if you're creating cortisol, you're creating something I can't beat with the diet. You know what I mean? Right. Versus your clients who um, are just comfortable executing and they just kind of cruise along and you'll watch their changes as we discussed is like they're just rapid because there's no chaos within them so you know that that's uh an interesting topic because i don't think people realize how much damage they're doing to themselves because they're doing all the work they're doing all the stuff they're supposed to do but that mental battle is is a mess and i know we've all dealt with it so you know kind of hearing your guys's takes on that and, and any advice you have for people that might start to realize they're struggling with it well I think people have to start with the understanding that, uh, first of all, this isn't supposed to be an absolutely miserable experience, right? Mm -hmm. And and that's a big part of why some people have miserable preps is because this the chaos in their mind. And you have to also make sure that you understand that we we don't have, you know, a bunch of science to back it up, but your, your, your mental environment affects your body. (laughs) <laughs> in a lot of for ways, sure. you know, your sleep, everything from your sleep quality to your digestion to, you know, which of course, then you're just cascading effects from there. Um, so you have to take responsibility for the environment that you give your coach to work with is how I like to, to put it. You know, mm-hmm. like I, I, I think a small part of this, and I'm not, I don't want to harp on this stuff. I think it's magnified by Instagram. So it's artificially we think uh, it's artificially a problem, but um, I know that there are, are some people that still kind of expect their coach to fix every single problem. Hmm. You know, they're like, Oh, I hired that coach and I don't know, he didn't get me in shape. And then, you know, you, they work with another coach and then, you know, whatever happens and you talk to that person and they're like, yeah, that guy's mind is just, he's just all over the map. He's just chaos. He's like, you know, got all this crap going on with his relationships and he's, you know, he's got this terrible body dysmorphia that he always thinks he looks, you know, fatter than he or, or ripped more ripped than he is. And there's all this stuff going on. You're like, oh, OK, you know, so like you have to rein all that in and make sure that you've got a calm environment that you're going to put your prep on, you know, mm-hmm. like it's the foundation of the prep is, you know, where where's your starting point here? You know, right. Do you, do you think that um, sometimes, uh, although I always prep to win, always, every show I ever did, even in the beginning, because I felt like it was the only way to bring the best out of you, but I also think that you can get too focused on that result versus just the execution day in and out. You know, like I always found I had my best results 
when I was in the moment and really just soaking up what needed to be done. You know, I found it was easier when I was really busy, when business, when I had the businesses and everything, I didn't really have time to think about what I was doing. I just read the plan from Chris, got the food together, ate the food, did the training Dante sent me, did the cardio, went to bed. You know, and there really wasn't even, it wasn't even time to look at my pictures. I remember I would look at them to make sure I was where I was supposed to be. And then I would send them to Chris, walking to the car, send the email, drive home and get my day started. And then like an hour later, you know, before I walked out the door, check it just to make sure there's no changes. But I never analyzed the photo because I was like, well, that's what I'm paying him for. Yeah. Like I brought him in so I wouldn't <clears throat> think. Because if I'm going to do this myself, I mean, I'm capable. But then I want to think. And that's that's I hired him so I wouldn't. You know what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. um, and I feel like that's an area people can look at. Plus, when we talk about the chaos in your head, I think you also have to factor in that if you're if you have chaos in your head that your coach is helping you with, and you know that's our job. So if you bring it to us, we got to figure it out. But it's not your significant other's job. So you're bringing that chaos most likely into your life, and then you're wondering why. I mean, I've, I've heard this many, many times. Oh, my wife doesn't support this, or my husband doesn't support this, and it might be true, but it also could be because you suck to live with during a prep <laughs> yeah that's very possible isn't yeah. it you know because yeah. i've 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 been literally lived with four people while prepping and no one had an issue with me prepping i never got right. a single complaint that's about important. prepping yeah which tells yeah. me that my prep was my prep it wasn't theirs like but i also didn't care i mean you know yesterday i, I post up the picture we left the gym we went to the store and while we were getting food, I was like, you know, I want a pizza after I train. Nikki ordered it. We went home. I ate it while she was sitting right next to me. This is her prep. I want pizza. Right, right, right. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Like, and she doesn't care <laughs> and she shouldn't care, you know, but you do hear wow. that like, oh, my husband, he had the nerve to bring home whatever and eat it. And I'm like, <laughs> he's not dieting. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, I know. Just be normal. I got a few thoughts. I got a few thoughts <laughs> okay. on this one because I, I kind of was take, putting a list together in my head here. So I think that there's a few different types of psychos. And I feel like I've fallen into every single category accidentally at one time or another. There's first, there's just like the all around person who's just got like, it's just the way they live their life. There's, there's some sort of drama. We could call it like the Kai Green psycho okay that like kai had to always overcome something like it couldn't be easy you know what i mean right i remember right. dave palumbo having an interesting observation about him and i've seen it in other people he couldn't just like go into the show and just do his best he had to like overcome great adversity to to be able to to, to feel like he deserved to compete you know what I mean? And so there had to be some sort of drama in there for him to overcome. It couldn't just be smooth. And then there's the the relationship psycho where like, hey, I'm actually a pretty level headed guy, but I'm in a relationship with a crazy girl and she drives me nuts. But right. the more I think about it and that that leads to all sorts of problems like, oh, man, we had a big fight last night, Dusty, and I went off plan afterward and it was a wreck, man. I Or I slept at my buddy's house. I'm sorry, man. I didn't get my check in to you today. But then if right. I think about it further, I feel like that still ties into the first one because you brought that into your life. You know what I mean? Right. So there's yeah. that. And then and then the other version, this guy throws me for a loop sometimes. He's the guy who isn't a psycho all through the prep. And then we get about three weeks out and he starts to get nervous. And mm -hmm. then he says to me, hey, by the way, I, I can't figure out, you know, first of all, why his pictures are looking like garbage. You know, all of a sudden they look like trash. And uh, I say, God, I don't, you know, you look different. You lost four pounds and you're super flat. Oh, yeah, I don't know, man. I didn't get enough sleep last night. I don't know what it was. I'm like, OK, well, why don't you check in tomorrow? And we do this for like we do this dance for like six days. And then he tells me. I did cut out all my sodium because I read it was a good idea that when you're coming into the, sh you know, they, they <laughs> and then you're yeah. like, wait, wait, you did what? Wait, yeah. What, what? Six uh, days uh, ago, uh, I said uh, it uh, fell uh, apart. Uh, yeah. Yeah, yeah. I cut all my sodium out because I yeah. read it was a good idea. And I talked to this guy at the gym who said, you really want to be eating low sodium going into the show. So I made, I did that. I don't know if that has anything to do with it. You know, so you, you do get people mm -hmm. like that too. And I think that, yeah, you just, 
you got to step back and recognize that it's all going to be all right. You just need to listen to your coach. And if you're working with one of us, like how many, I can't even count how many shows I've worked with people for, you know what I mean? It's like, we've oh, seen yeah. this before. I never kept track. I, I see, you know, you see people that have kept track. So they're like 600 wins, you know, 200 <laughs> first, like in all, and you know, you know, 23 pro cards. And I'm just like, I don't remember how many clients I've had. I don't know. All we like, know is Ron's in, when you get to be Olympia coach, you don't have to keep track anymore. Oh, yeah, yeah. <laughs> million, million. No, I, no, I, you know, I just, it's like I, I wish I had more training pictures, you know? Yeah, yeah. I, I think that the, 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 the big take home that, that I think people should consider is are you enjoying your prep? Yeah. Because if you're, if there's chaos, if you really think about it, you will say you're not. And I think you got to make a decision, either stop prepping because this isn't for you. Even if you're a great athlete, this might not be for you. Or ask yourself, okay, what is it that's taking away the enjoyment? Because it's not the cardio. And it's not the lifting. It's not the diet. These are all the things that we want. So what is it? And, and a lot of times you're probably going to find out that it's either something you're creating or it's something you're creating in your mind and you should let go of, you know? Um I think that that is the biggest thing. When I look back, I loved every prep I ever did. Like I enjoyed the process of the preps and the only prep that didn't go well was when I created chaos in my life and yeah. I did everything that I always did. I mean, execution was perfect. I probably talked about this on the show before, but, um, I remember it was like the night before nationals 2012 and I'm taking pictures in a hotel room and I'm like, the lighting's not good here. The lighting's not good here. The light I couldn't find good lighting. And it was because I didn't look good. There was no lighting that was going to make me look good because <laughs> I look like blank, you know, and looking back, it was so funny because I, I was like, Oh, well I created hell in my own life and then thought it wasn't going to have an effect. Yeah. So if it is, you know, and that was, uh, I always like to point out that for in my case, is like, it was my fault, the chaos, I created it. But whether you did or did not, it might be a good time to either remove the chaos if you can. And if you can't, pick a different show. It's not going to go well. Yeah. You know, it yep. just won't. So, yep. I don't know. I just think it's important. I've, it's funny, but living here in a town where there's less bodybuilding, um, I'm getting a lot more feedback on prep. Like people are watching Nikki's prep versus preps they've experienced mm -hmm. or preps they've seen in the gym. And they have a lot to say because they've never seen a prep that a, the athlete appears to be having fun. B the changes are ridiculous day to day. Um, and so they're almost confused. They're like, Oh, I thought prep sucked, you know? Yeah. And it's a realization yeah. that, that, you know, they just don't see that what you have is someone who's very grateful to be in the position yeah. and just enjoying it. Yeah. And yeah. you guys set it she's, up well too, right? She started early, you know, she's yeah. taking her time. Well, she's it's also competing because she wants to. to. Yeah. You know, like like there's no there's literally, and I could say this as an inside of the house, is she has no connection to the outcome at all. She doesn't even like she's doing a pro qualifier as her second show because chances are there won't be a ton of competition at the first show and she wants to compete with good girls. Yeah. But there's literally no connection to the outcome. And you know, if she won the whole thing, that'd be great. If she took second and was one point away from a pro card, it wouldn't necessarily ignite a need to do another show. Like she just wants to do these shows. Right. And I reminded her the other day, I said, well, you don't know that you won't compete again, but you do know that you don't care. Like it's, it's, it's not a hunt yeah. for a pro card. It's a, I want to do this one more time. Um, I think that's allowed it to be really enjoyable. Um, and, and that's an area that I just think more people should focus on. Like when I look back and I know Ron, you feel the same way. It took four years uh, from my first national level show to turn pro. And I loved all of them. Like I was trying to win and there was definitely disappointment when I didn't win. Right. But looking back, I'm so glad I didn't win my second one for, right. for many, many reasons. But I, you know, I really want people to connect to that. Like, it's so easy looking back. Like I'm sure you, Ron, I mean, with all of yours, like what a career to look well, back on. I mean, I wouldn't 
I wouldn't, you know, I've talked about how I wouldn't change anything. Yeah. But yeah, I mean, I, I enjoyed every prep too. I mean, some more than others. <laughs> Obviously. <laughs> but that, that, all, that usually had more to do with like, you know, how bad the carbs and cardio got. It, it, it wasn't really like, I don't think other than one or two, uh, like I did 24 shows and I think I maybe had life drama happening twice. Right. So that's a pretty good person. That's like a really good percentage of being relatively stable. <laughs> yeah. You know, stable as a um, Bible can be, <laughs> you know, like my finances were all sta- I, You know, if I was broke, I was broke, but I managed like, yeah. I remember being mm-hmm. super broke going to college, but I knew how much and I was budgeted and I was making it every week, you know, like tight and had no money. Um, but it wasn't a stress cause I was good. I was managing, I was in the groove, I was rolling, you know? Mm-hmm. And um, so uh, you know, I think only two of my preps, I had anything going on and they were really difficult. They were really difficult. Those are like the two hardest preps I can think of, right? you know? So you're not doing yourself any favors, you know? And one exactly. of those years was my worst, you know? Mm. Got hurt and, you know, getting hurt in the gym twice during prep, you can't tell me that's not related to being distracted, you know? Mm-hmm. You're not focused on what you're doing, making bad decisions while you're training, you know, chaos in your brain, you know, and it's, I just, everything comes back to where you, everything comes back to your perception of, of where you're at in life and what's going on, like how you view the world, how you see the world, how you see every problem. Like, you know, I was talking to someone the other day and, you know, every, the, just the, five minutes of just nonstop complaining. And I just mm. couldn't wait for it to end. Hmm. I was like, I can't believe this person is still complaining. And like, I tried to change the subject a couple of times and they just went back to complaining. And I was like, Oh my God, I just, it was just, I, I just, I just got to get out of here. Yeah. You know what right. I mean? Yeah. And <laughs> I and, love that your and, brain was like, what is happening? <laughs> yeah. And, 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 and you know, that, that, you know, where you're at, like how you feel about, your, what's going on in the world, man? That's your that's that's your worldview, and it affects your prep massively. So try to can try to get yourself into a good spot. You know, <laughs> you, you reminded me of something because uh, uh, Chris had shared with me a uh, a, a check in with someone at one point. He blocked off the name, but he was showing me um, a comparison my check into theirs, and it was a full breakdown of, of why his pictures were late and he got a flat tire and on and on. It was like a really long thing. And, and, uh, I read the whole thing and I was like, that's crazy. Cause yeah, Chris goes, yeah, I didn't read that. I, I just, <laughs> you know, and, and it was funny because, uh, during that prep, um, and, and I told him this after the back and forth, I got an abscess tooth during the prep. I mean, my mouth, I was like, what is going on? So I, mm-hmm. I made an appointment for a dentist. I go in. He goes, you got an abscess tooth. He's like, all right, here's our options. <laughs> and they, they involved like time that I didn't have. Yeah. And I was like, well, can you just pull it out? And he was like, ha, ha, ha. And I go, can you? And he was like, well, yeah, but you'll need a tooth. I go, but will it be okay for like two months out? And he's like, we pull it out. And... He yanked the tooth out, fixed it up. Um, I had to alter like something. I couldn't train for a couple hours or whatever it was. Couldn't chew on that side you know? for a day. So know? he he pulled it out, and it was funny because I went throughout the day and I did my day to day, and I got home later and after the gym and whatnot. And my wife at the time goes, "Hey, whatever happened to the dentist?" Like, "Oh yeah, he had to pull out my tooth." And she goes, "What?" And I was like, "Yeah, he had to pull it. Um, we're gonna have to put it in later, in a couple months or something." And it, it just, it hit me in that moment that I didn't tell Chris, I didn't tell her. It was like, cool. So I can eat again in an hour. And he's like, yeah, well, right, on yeah. that side. And I'm like, okay, cool. Let's go. Thank <laughs> yeah. you. Let's move on. And I, I know a lot of people that would have caused chaos. And to me, it was oh, relief. Yeah. I was like, oh, sweet. So this isn't a problem then. This is going to stop hurting. Yeah. Yeah. The pain will yeah. go away and I can eat. Awesome. Yeah. Thank you for the great news, doc. 600 bucks done. Yank it. Let's move yeah. on, you know? Yeah. And I think that that, again, like you said, Ron, it's how you choose to look at it. I could have been a whole meltdown. Oh, I've got all these, you know, issues. And it's like, 
No, I had an issue and then I got a solution and now it is over. And after yeah. the show, I'll go get a bone graft, whatever thing, put a post in and give me a fake tooth. Thanks. Right. So it's pretty easy. Can, can you think of an, uh, like, that's a great incident that, you know, your mental attitude, you know what I mean? And yeah. I, I sort of reminded me of when I tore my quad. Hmm. I, I remember, like, I, I kind of remember when I f that, like, first tore it. Like, I was laying on the ground, and I knew I my, remember. my quad was torn. And, like, <laughs> you were there, guys were around. I, I kind of remember knowing that I had to make a decision. Like, this can either be, like, a tragedy, or I can just go, Kate, what do we do? Let's go. At, at that moment. Like at that plane. moment. Okay. Yeah. Like, you, like, you know what I mean? Like, <laughs> yeah. like, like, you know, cause I, and I'm also, I think that comes cause I'm a big believer in like compounding the use of like the later you make a decision, the less benefit you get from it. Yeah. Yeah. yeah okay. You know, like if like the quicker you can make a decision and get your mind right. Right. The, the, the better everything's going to be. Right. And, and I remember being like, like, this is my reality. So, I can either be like super positive and like, hey, doc, what's up? Let's get this leg. You know what I mean? Yeah. Or I can be like, oh, my God. Oh, my God. You know, like that sort of thing. And I remember like being at the hospital, cracking jokes with the nurses. Like Emily showed up because like, you know, you guys called her. So she like came out of the yeah. hospital and she's like, oh, my God. And I'm sitting there and I'm like, hey, babe, turn my quad. You know what I mean? What well, actually started before that, Ron, because I don't know if you, I didn't know this in Canada, but you get in faster, according to what Ron told me in that moment, if an ambulance takes you. Hmm. So Ron was like, oh, call an ambulance. And I was like, what? And he goes, well, just it'll get me seen quicker. Like, so he already had a plan, like laying there. It's like he didn't, he could have, we could have got him to a car, but his brain immediately was like, what makes this work fastest? Yeah. And it was get an ambulance that gets me in quicker. It wasn't about the ambulance. It just literally will get me seen faster. Yeah. And that yeah, was strategy. the beginning of the process. It was like, I have a strategy to get this done as soon as possible. And I remember going, good thinking. <laughs> you know, I mean, <laughs> because <laughs> maybe that at, maybe that took an hour or two off of being seen. Yeah. You know? And, and yeah. And then maybe I would have got a different doctor and the doctor yeah. I got was awesome. And you know what I mean? Like, so I don't know. I'm just there was never any like, moment of like, oh, my God, this is so terrible. It was like, OK, here's what we have to do. And, and that's I do think that that's how most successful people operate, because it doesn't matter. Like your feelings about what just happened hmm. don't matter. And I, I say that all the time. And my friends tease me because I always say your feelings don't matter, but they don't like the universe does not care if you think this is unfair or sad or inconvenient or whatever it is. And, and I feel like that's a lost thing. Same thing. I woke up from a coma. I was like, well, I guess I got to learn how to walk again. Let's get this going. Yeah. I, I, I remember the day I went for surgery. It was three days later. They called me. And so it was mm -hmm. 72 hours. I went in for my surgery and I remember they were wheeling me to the, you know, the surgery room. And, um, it was the surgeon and his assistant, this like resident surgeon, right? And um, I remember the resident surgeon said, he goes, I have never seen, like he said to me right when we were done talking, he goes, I've never seen anybody this excited about surgery. <laughs> <laughs> He's like, because I was like pumped. It was like I was going to a fucking Metallica concert. I was like, <laughs> I was like, okay, let's go. Let's go. Here we go. Like, and I was like cracking yeah. joke, super alert. And, and he was like, you are like hyped for this. And I was like, yes, this is like, start the clock. Yeah. And he was like, okay. You know, like he, he was just like completely blown away, but yeah. I was like really excited about it. I, the doctor comes and you know, normal people probably don't want to hear anything. And, and I go, okay, so what are we doing? Like, are you like, is there going to be any metal in there? Like how much rope's going in there? Like I was asking him questions and he was just like, <laughs> you know? he walked out and goes psycho. Yeah. <laughs> That's amazing. <clears throat> That's good oh, stuff. Man. Okay. Right, well, what's, what's, sorry what's I drug that what's along next? everyone, but I, I, I thought it was a needed thing. And then Ron, and I so I guess what's the bottom line, how to be and how to not be a psycho. Just try to calm yourself down. 
and yeah, don't overthink and just i think the biggest that. thing is is execute every day if, if your plan is right and you focus on the execution the result will take care of itself yeah or as the it's canadians would say calm your tits calm that, your tits that's a canadian yeah. one right ron <laughs> yeah i don't i don't say it, but yeah that might be a canadian one i yeah, think I'm it like, is i think it is feel yeah. good about that yeah, yeah, we'll take credit we'll for be, that. If not, we'll get, we'll get corrected in the yeah. uh, comments. So I don't think we'll get demonetized still, for that either. I think we're it's, good. It's still yeah. nothing beats the the British with piece of piss. Yeah. Oh man, <laughs> nothing beats that. That's still the best. Okay. So what do you guys what want to do? What's next? You want listener questions and stuff. Yeah. Right. Yeah. 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 I know we off. had that list. I know Dusty had that list too. Yeah, I've got one here. Here's a Patreon one. Okay, and he says, oh, um, "Yes." He says, "So he's a lifestyle client." And he says, you know, he knows that a lot of us work, that, that we work with a lot of lifestyle clients, non-competitors. He said, that's what he is. He says, um, what are the biggest mistakes that you typically see lifestyle clients make? And especially the mistakes that they don't even realize they're making. Ooh. <laughs> I got some great ones. Do you, um, Dusty? Yes. Here, here so one of yours. I, I got to start with one about. of the worst ones. Um but what it is 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 the the lack of knowledge, and that's a it's a coach's job to kind of keep an eye on things again, but of understanding um, what are in different foods. So, for example, a soft one that happened the other week. I'm going to lead with because uh, she's a great client, but um, she was thinking ahead, had a trip, and decided to get kale salads to replace her greens, which was fine. Um, the downside was my first thought was what's in that besides kale. Yeah. So I do a quick search and it really wasn't that bad. And in this case it worked out because she was very active, but I just pointed out to her, I said, Hey, I really want you to be mindful of those things because a quick Google search on Chick-fil-A's website told me how many calories each one of those what is versus you just eating your normal greens. Um, and as a lifestyle person, the reason I bring this up is because that's not a bad decision as long as you know you're making it. So like I told her, I go, I'm not really against this. You're going to be moving so much. It doesn't matter. But I just want you thinking in the future, if you are not going to be moving a ton, that's not a great trade for green beans. So when she came right. back, she lost weight because she was burning calories like crazy, running all over the place. Yeah. But now she's like, cool, the kale, did, we found good information. The kale worked better. And now we're using our own controlled kale as, ah. as, a, as a green, but a, but a funny example, which actually was my mother. So I, I can, I can give her this one. Um, I had her on a diet and I had her eating a certain amount of potatoes and I'm over at her house one day and, uh, her boyfriend is making her food and, uh, I'm sitting there and he puts it in front of her and I look down and I go, what the is this? And I'm looking at her potatoes and he goes, those are potatoes. I go, those are tater tots. <laughs> <laughs> like, like fried, like he had fried weighed tater tots. out frozen fried tater tots. Oh man. And put them in front of her. And I was like, yeah. Uh, uh, <laughs> like I was like, it, and the, and the reason it was so like, it broke my brain was I realized that had he fried them, he would have not done it. Had I suggested French fries, he would have said, that's ridiculous. But because they were at Costco yeah. and they are potatoes and they're frozen, it was easier. Yeah. And it yeah. just, it, yeah. it really helped me as a coach realize like, oh, I yeah. got to be real cautious because like he didn't, he had no idea how ridiculously stupid that was. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> So yeah, that was my favorite funny. ever. I mean, I was trying so hard to not react terribly because I'm like, <laughs> I think I know why we've stalled on our chain. <laughs> Should be a better choice of potato sauce. I've got yes. a similar one. I've got a similar one to that, Dusty. Uh, and this was like 2013, probably, or somewhere in there. And I still remember this guy to this day. I'm going to call you out, Zach. If you're watching this, first you know, name. He, yeah. oh, he's, a, he's, a, he's a good friend of mine, too. <laughs> and uh, we actually started working together again just recently. Uh, and just I like lifestyle today. stuff. Go ahead. Yeah. Oh. He, was, he was competing at the time. And it, he, uh, he he all of a sudden, like, we weren't seeing the progress we wanted. 
And um, I can't remember the scenario, but we were getting closer to a show. And uh, I said, you know, well, I gave him the option too. I said, you could use a cup of rice or eight ounces of sweet potatoes. Okay. And, and, and this is for a few different meals. And we're, I'm breaking it down with him. I'm like, so what are you doing with your rice? Like, how you, know, how you cooking it? How you measuring it? And uh, he said uh, something about the sweet potatoes. And eventually, somehow I figured out every time he ate sweet potatoes, he was using Bruce's candied yams, which was a canned sweet potato. And it had like 70 grams of sugar per yeah. serving, you know? Yeah. And he was like, yeah. So every time I, eat, I choose fish, I eat fish, I use the sweet potatoes with that. So I'm eating sweet potatoes like two times a day. And we dug in deeper. It was his, it was his girlfriend at the time. She was like, should Zach be eating candied yams? Because she saw him doing it. And so, yeah, we, we pulled the candy yams out. We went back to <laughs> regular sweet potatoes. And oh, my God, did that make all the difference in the world to get did him that 140 shape. grams of sugar per day yeah reduced, yeah help yeah us cut his carbs in half <laughs> so we literally just started working together again like three weeks ago and when i wrote his diet out there was a spot where i said sweet potatoes and i didn't not even say anything to yams. him yeah i put it in i put it in parentheses i said not bruce's candied yams <laughs> I just sent that to him <laughs> that's, that's amazing yeah. oh wow that's great yeah that's great. oh man those are good, but but I do think it's important on the question. Um, so as, as a lifestyle competitor, ask. Yeah. You know, because, and that's the credit I give is like my, you know, I love when a good client, like the one I listed, sends me something because I'm like, this is, you know, I literally said, I'm like, number one, it's perfect for what you're doing, so we're all good. But I love that it, it, it creates a learning experience that as a coach, I think sometimes we have to be mindful of the fact that common knowledge as a, 20 year coach is not common knowledge. Mm-hmm. Yeah. You know, I, and it's I've really got, important that we do that, that we think and, and, and are smarter because it's not a dumb mistake. It's literally, they're, they're making good decisions. Just not I, knowing. I've, oh, I've, 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 had, I've had it go the other way too, where you feel bad because someone did an entire prep thinking something oh. that you're like, Oh, I didn't realize that. I haven't that. seasoned and a chicken like, breast for yeah, eight months. Yeah. Yeah. Like, like, uh, you know, just so like, uh, I mean, one is the diet soda thing. Like I've had people they're like, oh, like I remember one guy, um, I said, uh, Hey, after prejudging, why don't you have a, have a, like a, a diet Coke or something pretty nice cold diet Coke after prejudging, you know, and, uh, just, you know, chill out for a bit and just, you know, get, and, uh, and he's drinking it and he goes, this is so good. And I'm like, yeah, they taste pretty good. You know? day of the show and you're thirsty and he's like yeah i just have been wanting one for months and i was like you "You didn't you didn't drink any during your prep and he's like i'm not allowed to drink these am i (laughs) (laughs) you did a whole prep without a diet drink at all and he's like i ain't drink nothing but water man for like 16 weeks machine yeah. He's just a machine. He's like, I, I didn't want to put that stuff in my body. I didn't think I'd be allowed to have it. Yeah. I, I just didn't think you'd let me have Diet Coke and, and Crystal Light. And, and he realized that he just. <laughs> He's watching my videos of gallons going down. He's like, what an idiot. I just I just was like, I don't know how it escaped him. It just kind of escaped him. You know, it's just like certain things that you just, oh, I didn't know that. You know, let's like talk that, about that how was... sliced that guy was because I know he was. <laughs> Perfect. In every way, if he, did he didn't even pretty good, ask, actually, then he was nasty. He, had, he actually had his legs were really ripped. He had great legs. Yeah, it was funny. But I was like, yeah, you could add a few diet cokes. I think maybe a, a couple. Day. We could have snuck a few in. You yeah. know, next time. That's and you don't want to like true. break it to him. You don't want to yeah, be brutal. Yeah, you want to, you. Like, you know, well, you know, maybe. Maybe we'll see how you look tonight, and we'll use that information for next year's prep, and maybe we can have yeah a little more. Oh man, that's amazing! Oh wow, that's good stuff. Good stuff. Oh, yes, God. those are okay. the main ones I could think of. And then one more thing, Scott, on that yeah. that, that just I just actually literally I was late calling you guys because I messaged a girl from our gym for this, and she's actually a trainer, but she's getting ready for a show, and and this is for competitors or non but i don't think people realize that cranking up the incline and then holding on and leaning back (laughs) takes away the incline yep 
So I, I just like to say on when you're doing your cardio on a treadmill, don't touch it. There's a reason that you're you want to touch it. It's because it makes it easier. Yeah. So and and you really are hurting yourself. It's so funny. I I hate sending those messages because I literally I, I I actually text John, that's the GM of the gym. And I said, Hey, this lady, I don't know her. Is she cool? Cool, because I want to tell her this, but I don't want to think I'm like an ass. But I yeah. also am an ass if I don't tell her while she's in prep. So I like sent that awkward DM where I'm like, Hey, you might not care. And you might want to tell me to leave you alone, but I have to tell you this, <laughs> right. you know, because she yeah. was just one set one to, like I've walked by a few times in the last few weeks where she's either holding the front of it, yep, or locked elbows on the sides, and I'm like, oh, you're doing all that work, and you're gonna have to do more than you have to do time wise if you just yeah. let go. Same with like along. laying over the stepper, you know, they yep. grab on and lay balance on top. only, balance yeah. only. Yeah. Your hands can be on there lightly for balance. That's it. Yeah. I always, if I could see your triceps because you're locked <laughs> down on it. <laughs> right. Yeah. No bueno. No bueno. But I you don't, have a, a little over. bit of lat tension, a little bit of lat tension on each step. I, I'm yeah. not fine. A little bit of <laughs> be a rhythm to it, though, you know? Yeah. 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 yeah my rhythm is just to walk past that and get on a treadmill. Um, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> can I do like 10 more sets of squats? And then not do the stepper, please. I will, I will squat faster. Is that a yeah? Thing? Let me guys squat real fast. <laughs> um, let's okay. see. How about this one? He says, uh, uh, a "Coach of mine told me, and this is also from Patreon." He says, "Coach of mine told me about Soviet era training." Um, he says, um, "In which apparently athletes would never know how much weight or reps they were going to do." The coach would load the weight and then instruct them to push until they can't and then do three more. Do you guys think there's a difference um, uh, between using training intensity to drive weights and reps as opposed to traditional methods of using weight and reps to drive intensity? Do you think that the, would there be any advantage to this or disadvantage? Yes. The, the, the advantage, the, the advantage is simple to me and it's impossible to do for yourself. But if you watch, sometimes you'll watch videos and you'll tell a client like an, an intense client, somebody who works hard, you'll say, all right, we're shooting for 12 to 15 and right around 11, it gets really, really hard. But at 10, it was effortless or, or, you know, point being is there is a point where they know where their line is and sometimes they'll feed it. You know, uh, or they'll stop at 15 because they got 15. And the, the set was 12 to 15. Uh, there's something to be said for one more. I used to love that. When I trained with Chris Cormier, he would do that. I wouldn't know how many we were doing. And I'd start going and he'd be like, three more. And I'd do two more. And he'd go, three more. And I'd do two. And he'd be like, four more. And I started to realize two things. Number one, he can't count. <laughs> number two it doesn't matter so i literally just would go and the workouts were nasty because the number did not matter and i understood what he was doing he thought when he said three more the first time that was all i had and then right. i'd get two more and he was very clear that there was more in the tank and and i did have phenomenal workouts because of that and i think i learned to ignore my own line there and, and i think people need to really consider that so the the advantage i wouldn't want to not know the weight because the weight is important. <laughs> like, you know, right. I have an idea of, I want to know what I'm about to lift off. Of yeah. Bar. Right. That I part know. is important to me. Like I, I can't imagine lifting off and it being 455 or it being 225. Yeah. And like, not knowing I don't need that, uh, that initial step. shock. Yeah. You know, cause yeah. it's important. I mean, you, anybody who's ever stepped off the rack with like 600 pounds on a, on a squat like you want to know it's 600 pounds before you lift up and take that first step it kind of allows I, you to get amped for that step back like whew. right i mean that's that's an important part of the exercise is stepping it off the rack you yeah. know i i guess i understand like they're hoping that the mental they're hoping that it's a positive a net positive on like the mentality I guess. Yeah. Is that what they're doing? But I'm just wondering if it, it would be a net positive, you know? I'm I mean I, I remember hearing that there were 
there there was a Russian weightlifter who was going for his gold medal, and they it was like, do we go for the gold medal or do we go for the gold medal and the world record? Right. And he was like, well, let's go for the gold medal. But the coach was like, let's go for the world record, put another like two pounds on or whatever. And yeah. then they like got it. And yeah. then he told him after he's like, we went up and he's like, Oh, I remember hearing that story, but I could see you know, that that's, though. That's, that's a, that's yeah, a yeah. brief yeah. benefit. And I think yeah. we talked about that. I, I did that to my training partner a month or so ago. Um, I just added a plate that he didn't know I put on. Cause I yeah. Knew he had yeah. Stuff like that. Yeah. But he was prepared for it to be really heavy and it was really heavy. It was just a little really heavier than he knew. Yeah. He was already That's in different the mood, than like completely say. not knowing. You know? <laughs> like, yeah. Like, could you imagine if I was just like, like, you know, me as your back spotter and two guys lifted the bar off on like an incline bench and then let go and you went, just <clears> handed <throat> it to you. And you're like, Oh, and then you got done. I was like, yeah, that was five twenty. And you're like, Something I would have liked to have known before I felt it bust my yeah. elbows out. <laughs> like, yeah, that's that's a that's an interesting thing though, Scott. I like that. All right, how about this one? Um, Chris Bumstead says, uh, "Let's see, uh, what Mister Olympia from what years past would C Bum beat, and how far back in time would Chris's physique be uh, the a uh, uh, winner of the Olympia?" And we're talking open bodybuilding here. First adjustment. Chris Bumstead did not say that. Okay, moving on. Yeah. No, no, no. <laughs> yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah. You're yeah. all Chris Bumstead we're, said, and I'm like. Chris Bumstead had a, some guy named no, no, Chris Bumstead had a question. Chris Bumstead, 6479. Yeah. yeah, there we go. <laughs> yeah, yeah. says. Very cute. Um, well, I think it would go back to um, early Lee Haney era, before Lee Haney, that era there, he might fit in there. I mean. Before Lee Haney, we're looking at like, you know, Dickerson and guys like that, which, you know, Chris would smoke those guys. Here's a list. Um, you know, Chris Chris would, you know, obviously beat. Dust Frank know, Zane. Yeah. You know, he does yeah. Frank Zane, Chris Dickerson, Franco, um, you know, I mean, Sergio and Larry. Would he dust Arnold? Well, I mean, by our standards, yes. Um, you know, he would dust Arnold in, you know, relatively every pose, development wise, conditioning. Um, you know, does he beat Samir Banu that one year? Yeah, probably. <laughs> Samir was pretty shot. awesome that year, though. Yeah, <laughs> it's um. I think what's tricky, like you said, Ron, is like we're mentally bringing our standards to them. Yeah, and I and you guys have all witnessed this. Even even at like a local show, someone will show up. Say, say not bodybuilding, but like figure where she's nuts and you're like, okay, she's either winning the entire show or she's getting fourth. Right. Right. Like, <laughs> you know what I mean? And, and us as people who are thinking like pros or like top level national think she should win. But there are those cases where it's like, she's the odd man out. She's too hard. Maybe not now, but maybe like five or six years ago where it was like, Oh, they had a, this gray area where they were supposed to be. Um, Cause yeah, I mean, if you ask me, him versus Arnold, I'm like, oh, Chris wins every single time because yeah. he's because my brain is on today's standards and he has the same classic shape, but it's better. Yeah, you know, and, I mean, you know, look, I'm going to get death the threats the after stuff, this goes right? up. So here we go. You know, <laughs> yeah, <laughs> yeah. yeah. Thankfully, I think I think Chris Bumstead has enough fans that I can actually say something against Arnold and not be attacked. Yeah. Yeah, yeah conditioning cool. wasn't as important then. Legs weren't as important then. You no. know, yeah. yeah. But still, you know, his physique beats them. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Good okay. question. All right, what else do we have? Did you guys here? see? Did you guys see that Bum said was on Jordan Peterson's podcast? I didn't see it, but I heard he was. Yeah. yeah. Did you check? So it out? I've I've listened to most of it. I'm almost the whole way through. I've got like five minutes left. How, how was it? Even though I know the answer, but like, was it? Interesting. Well, it was good. It, it's not an. It's not as much of an interview. It's. It's almost like like Jordan probably talks for half of it. Like there's he always there's does. A, there's <laughs> a bunch of periods where Jordan talks for like ten minutes straight, but it's almost like you're not watching an interview with Chris. You're watching Jordan give Chris a two hour session. Really? So like you know they're talking about like some pretty deep stuff, and Chris is like 
you know, he'll ask Chris a question and Chris will go on for like five minutes. And then Jordan will take that and run with it for like five, 10 minutes. Huh. But you'll see that Chris is like really like he's listening and like taking it in. And, you know, it's pretty interesting. Um, you know, some people don't like JP's cadence and, you know, his wordsmithing and how, you know, academic he speaks. But um, I think the general, uh, it was good to see Jordan kind of develop a respect for Bumstead over the course of the interview. Mm. Like, mm -hmm. it's like he really was, uh, you could see every once in a while, Jordan would like look down and write something, like take notes on something Bumstead mm -hmm. said. And there was a few periods of time where Chris was talking about like, you know, his mindset going into the Olympia and, like, you know, being present and, you know, how he looks at, you know, opportunity and stuff. And you could see Jordan would go, hmm, and like look down and make notes. And you're like, oh, he found that interesting. Yeah. So uh, Chris really came across as like, you know, Chris. Chris yeah. <laughs> I'm going to see uh, JP in May. No kidding. I'm so dumb. Ron, I mean, on so many levels, but on this specific one, uh, I didn't know that you could like go watch him. I'm like a fan oh, yeah. that watched all of his stuff. And a friend of mine was like, oh, I'm going to see him on Monday. And I was like, what? what? And she goes, yeah, I've seen him twice. And I was like, yeah, he's like a comedian. She goes, yeah, same thing. I immediately, yeah. she goes, she's on tour right now. I, I'm telling Nikki the story. And of course, what happens when you tell Nikki anything? She just does it. Yeah, she she goes, okay, tickets, yeah. Oh, Charlotte. Okay, let's go. Uh, she's like, a I ticket buyer. It. Yeah, it's That's done. Cool. I'm like, oh, sweet. You married a ticket so, yeah, buyer. I did. <laughs> Um, I so saw good. I saw it was a it was a few years ago um before COVID. It was Jordan Peterson say that. Uh, yeah, oh yeah. uh debating Fix Sam that. Harris. What's that? You can't say that word. It's like fuck, but worse. Oh um, yeah, okay. <laughs> I, make a note, Scott. Uh it was JP and he debated Sam Harris and they had Brett Weinstein as the moderator. And uh at the time, um, I was into some some topics that all three were heavily discussing. So I got tickets with a friend, and we went down and we watched it. Theater was packed, like huge lineup outside. Theater was packed. Crowd was crazy. When JP came on stage, they erupted like he was a rock star. When Sam Harris came on stage, they erupted like he was a rock star. Brett Weinstein came on stage, they erupted like the crowd was just awesome. awesome. Like. And then they had this debate, which was really interesting. You know, I, I, I sided with Sam through most of the debate, but I really wanted to hear Jordan's take and I respect his take. They kind of were talking about religion and that's kind of one of the things I depart from JP on. Cause he's, you know, bit, bit, he's a pretty religious guy uh, at yeah. the root. Right. Um, so I don't really share that with him, but so I, in this particular debate, I was siding with Sam mostly, but man, was it interesting and just how nice the crowd was and how friendly everyone was. Like when you're all like going into the theater, everyone's like, hi, how's it going? Good. I'm excited. You excited? Like it was really yeah. crazy vibe. Not and like a Metallica we were, concert. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And, and then I remember there were like protesters out front. I was like, really? Oh, God. Huh. Yeah, we were leaving the show and there were like protesters like down with JP, you know, they were just upset about something. I don't know. So I mean, what's uh, funny, Ron, is I, I'm his, this one I'm going to is based in religion. Mm. And that's why I'm interested to go because I don't do religion. Right, so right. I'm, I, I like that. Like, it's funny, but I, I, I contrary to most of the world now, like I want to hear what you think when I right, disagree. Right, right. You know, because right. I like to know where it comes from and, and allow it to alter or, or let my brain go where it goes with information. But it's it's funny because when Nikki read the title of it, which I don't even remember, she read it. She goes, you want to go? Like she did. She did the pause for me. And I was like, right, yeah, right. I want to see. Yeah, it. well, I'll go see what he has to is. say. You know, I mean, <clears throat> I, 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 I like listening to a lot of his stuff, you know, not everything. Mm -hmm. Sometimes a little too, you know, I don't watch like an hour long seminar on you know marriage strategy i'm not gonna <laughs> so I'm don't gonna be watch an asshole one. don't be an asshole there I saved <laughs> some time. summed it um, up for you <laughs> yeah yeah but it's uh, it's cool to go watch interesting speakers have you guys ever seen henry rollins never in I've, person i've heard him in person talk but yeah a bunch of times yeah he was cool i went and saw him uh do his spoken word tours a few times no and kidding. uh he's just basically a 
just tells crazy stories, right? Because he's got yeah. so many crazy stories. So he's just a storyteller. But yeah, yeah, he was awesome. So that sort of thing could be a lot of fun sometimes. I want Ron to start doing these because he's a storyteller. And I would actually attend and pay. I'd go. I think we'd find Absolutely. a few people here that listen that go. That we'd all go. Absolutely. I yeah, just load yeah. him up with topics, maybe piss him off, and then let him roll. Yeah. Uh, don't, <laughs> Wait, don't tell that sounds that. familiar. I feel like that you may have done that before. I don't need to leave my house to do that. <laughs> yeah. Valid point. I'm, I'm just, yeah, I'm just, yeah, just yeah. had thoughts. Instead of yeah, spending yeah. money, you could make money. Ah. There you go. There you go. Ah. Guys, I got, a, I, I got a few here we need to rapid fire through. The people have right, their questions. Go. We got to answer. So question for the next podcast. You guys consider taking TRT prescribed by your doctor uh, the same as someone on gear? He said, and I have to use the word because he said it, or taking, is it like gear or taking roids? I hate that no. word. That's the worst word ever. Can we not use that word? Ever. Just the word roids? It's just a terrible yes. word. Hey, you on yeah. roids? <laughs> roids is so like, uh, it's like kind of negative negative early 90s it is isn't it's, it it's like an early 90s slur yeah it is you know, isn't oh, it those roid guys yeah you roid know bench. roid heads yeah. yeah ties in um what was the question again so are you are you on gear are you on oh, roids yeah. are you on roids ron if you're taking well TRT? okay so so technically for it to be exactly the same you'd have to get your test levels checked you know and find out exactly where they are and then you'd have to like, let's say they come back mid range and then you, you, you go on TRT, but you just take enough TRT that your test levels just stay in mid range. So you essentially shut your system down, but then just For replace nothing. it with exactly where you were. That's natural. Anything above <laughs> that is slightly augmented for sure. Not natural anymore. Like TRT is not natural. Because natural is getting old and dying, right? Yeah, yeah, Na yeah. Natural, natural is like, that's natural. Everything getting worse and worse every day until the very end. That's natural, <laughs> right? So as soon as you start suspending that process or delaying it at all, you can't say you're natural anymore. I, I do believe there is like, it's not black or white. It's not like you're juiced or you're natty. No, there is a, there is a different zone. And it's uh, augmented. It's optimized. We use these words. Optimized. Yeah. Uh, I don't know. That's a good one, though. Agreed 100%. I don't want to, I don't want to extend our, our rapid fire, All right. Scott. So I'm just going to say agreed 100%. All right. How about okay. this one then, guys? Um, okay. Have any of you experimented with intermittent fasting for a diet to shed body fat? Or is it just a dangerous tool that's a last resort? Dangerous meaning fear of losing muscle mass. Um, so I have, I toyed with, I didn't do intermittent fasting ever, but I have toyed with like not eating for longer periods of time after I get up and, mm -hmm. um, you know, cause I figure, okay, why do people do fasted cardio? This was my experiment. I was like, people do fasted cardio cause you know, they're burning calories while they're in an unfed state and all the kind of theory behind that. So I remember like, one one prep i was like you know i'm just gonna like i was time for an adjustment i remember i was like hmm do i like bump my cardio a bit or you know what am i gonna do and i was like i'm just gonna move my breakfast back 90 minutes and i'm gonna do all my house chores in the morning i'll do all yeah. my laundry i'll cook all my meals i'll like do all this stuff and then i'll eat breakfast at like like an hour and a half later than normal and uh i remember just started doing that and i was like oh that like got i got leaner Cause I was just, it was this activity, you know, it was this activity. So, but, but, uh, that's the only thing I ever really did with like, you know, extending, you know, that, what do they not eat till 6 PM? Most of them. It all varies. Yeah. Yeah. yeah there's yeah, like some a sort of yeah. long period. Like vegan. Um, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> uh, only thing I ever did Dante and I, um, to help with digestion and kind of just pulling in my midsection at one point, mm. we would do a one day a week, a long gap. But it was it wasn't really that difficult because I would eat my last meal. I can't remember the time. It was like eight a.m. or eight p.m. and then go through the whole night. And then I want to say it was like you know ten or noon that I would eat again. And it wasn't very difficult to do once a week. Right. It wasn't really a big deal. I was also on a very high fat, low carb diet at the time, um, so I, I did notice 
between those two things, you know, things came down. I, I do find for me, if I avoid carbs, m- my stomach is way tighter uh, or was when I was eating a ton. Now it doesn't matter. I'm tight all the time. But <clears throat> when I was pushing food, I did notice the difference in that. Um, but I stopped because I didn't. It, it became one of those things that, you know, Ron mentions all the time where I'm like, and we're focused on this tiny little thing. And I, I think there's bigger things that would give me a higher impact. Like, I don't know, doing transverse abdominal training instead. Mm. Right. Okay. You know, and I think that's, we get caught on those things pretty often. It's like, Oh, this tiny little thing. It's like, Oh, can I suggest you just like lift heavier? Good call. <clears throat> yeah. <laughs> lift heavier. Yeah, that was, uh, that's actually funny. Someone asked, uh, they were showing me, they said, how do I get rid of this belly fat? And I just said, the more you move and the more you lift, the faster that will disappear. That's yeah. all I said. And they were like, oh. All right. First I think exercise, this one's- push away from the table. Yeah. Um, yeah. <clears throat> I think this one's from George White here. He says um, it's from YouTube, so it's not his real name. It's like Geo Zio. Um, right. Question. I, I, I ha- he says I haven't. I usually don't have questions. You guys uh, um, consolidate ninety nine percent of what I already believe. But here's my pathetic attempt at a question: What should someone who has trained for forty years, competed for thirty nine years, do now? He says he's still rowing and benching three plates, but he's about to turn uh, 60 in seven months, and it sounds like he's he's going to stop competing. Oh, um, well, I mean, I don't really I don't really tell people what to do. The guy sounds like he's he's uh, he's got iron in his blood for sure. And uh, I mean, just stay healthy, man. If you've been competing for 39 years and you're still able to train like that, great shape, you've done too. a really good job of keeping your body together. You know what I mean? And mm-hmm. um, just focus on that. Like, you know, focus on keeping your body together and just look at, start looking at longevity as your goal. Cause you're so many miles ahead of the average person with like your general fitness and your strength and all this, the, those markers that are supposed to carry you on, you know? So just look at what an advantage you advantageous position you have to focus on maximum number of years now. Cause you've got this quality foundation of like this, you know, hopefully really, really good situation that he's in now. Cause anyone who's you know, rowing and benching three plates is like, like it doesn't sound like his shoulders are blowing out or he's got a yeah. bad back or anything. You know what I mean? Yeah. So like, that's, that's incredible. My, so. my first thought was actually because he didn't mention like changing his training just sounds like a competition is done. If you're pushing 60 years old and you've been competing this time, the one thing my knee jerk, cause I know that's what I ran into is you need somewhere to put that competitive nature. I don't know where, and it doesn't need to be actual competition, but there needs to be a competition within you somehow, because I just can't imagine, and I mean, you got nearly 20 years on me, like I can't imagine that that goes to sleep. If if you've been driven to compete at 59 years old, then I think there has to be something that you're doing um, because you're a strong person, and I'm not talking about physically, like you enjoy the chase, the hunt, the you know, the overcoming all, you know, the competition itself. So I think you got to find something in that because I'm a firm believer. If those things disappear, you, you die. Like, yeah. you know, I, I say that all the time. My mother used to talk about retiring and I'm like, that sounds like death. No. Yeah. Like I don't want to retire. I don't want to slow down. I don't want to stop thinking, reading, training, whatever it is. Like you've got to keep moving. So I think if not, you'll, you'll find, I would, I would start tinkering around with other things you know, like Ron does, like I, it was something I really appreciated watching. I was like, oh, okay, he's taking the time that's that bodybuilding has freed up or the focus and saying guitars, bike, all these things that he had, you know, wanted to do maybe, but couldn't. And that altered state allows you to let it go. Cause I think if not, that's where you see people disappear from bodybuilding and come back. Yeah. Be- yeah. And also just the risk to reward of the type of training that is required, um, yeah. to, you know, be big, like, like you certainly don't want to be 62 and then start tearing pecs and shit. Like, yeah, like, like 
just a, you if you haven't done that already just consider yourself a, a winner you survived the mad max <laughs> <laughs> of bodybuilding like don't do that to yourself yes. yeah don't start tearing shit now like like reassess where you're at take really good care of your body you probably have if you're a hardcore bodybuilder and that's all you've been doing you probably have some 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 issues with things not being quite you know balanced and operating <laughs> properly like and you're probably not fully like stable you're and all that and, you got some problems yeah yeah. yeah, you, you want to, you want to, yeah. We're talking about mental or physical. No. Never mind. Go ahead. <laughs> Plus, like, Both. he's only Both. he's only fifteen away. He's only fifteen years away from having to worry about falling and breaking hips. So he's got to keep a uh, good motor. Yeah. <laughs> he should do some athletic stuff. Maybe a little footwork now. <clears throat> Same yeah. growth. He's fine. Um, yeah, yeah. I'm just busting <laughs> balls. <laughs> all right. I'm not going to be able to get to all of them. Like we did get a lot of questions, which you guys are freaking awesome. And please, for we're getting toward the end. So for our last five, 10 minute crew. I don't know how far we are from the end, but I want to say, leave us questions for the next show. Cause we're going to need them. Kyle asked us one. Once again, this was from Patreon though. He says, um, okay. So looking at some IG videos, he says, Dusty doing JM presses. He sets up backwards on the bench. I'm curious what his reason is for this. Were you doing JM presses or were you doing your skull crushers? Yeah. I mean, they're essentially it's, Potato, potato. It's like when people say the, uh, you know, RDLs versus stiff legs. Okay, I thought um, a JM press was something different. I thought it was more like a, like a it is grip kind of. It, 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 that's the thing. That's what I mean. It's basically like a lot of people say a skull crusher is over your head, okay. extending. You know, so. But yes, oh. I know what he's talking about. So oh, basically, so jam with, jam press is more like hanging more off the bench. No, 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 no. It's no, actually no. It's, it's actually it's more like, like bench press pushing forward. It's oh, like a bench okay, with a little elbow. Okay. Yeah, <laughs> okay. But okay. Um, the reason I set up that way is because it's easier for me to get underneath the bar, unrack it, and not worry about hitting the rack. Mm. And I don't need a spot because unracking from overhead and then lifting it out and then doing as many as I can and then straightening out and then having to like heave it back if I'm alone, I'm just not comfortable with. And I did find that if I, when I got used to just turning around, th throwing my ass through the ground, you know, just letting it hang down there, that I never felt like I wanted to like flip over or anything. I felt really stable, could balance my feet in. It was just easy to do because I only really have a spot on those um, if I want to plan on pushing a couple extra reps. You know, plus I you usually just use Nikki to get more hits on my videos, if I'm being honest. So I'm a marketer, it's dangle, guys. Dusty. It's all about dangle. marketing. I'm like, so, yeah. let me see that video. Eh, yeah, let's slide it over to the left. You're, I'm in it too much. You're in it not enough. Um, <laughs> been there. Um, <laughs> no, but that's uh, that's why it's just it's super easy to unrack that by myself and go. And I hate unracking even a barbell bench on my own. I'm like. You put 400 pounds on an incline and you're sitting where I need to sit. That the hardest part is unracking it. Hmm, yeah. You know, yeah. that's why I'm like, here, can you lift this out over my face and then I'm good to go? It's a bad thing. You don't need, don't need, you don't need to be face. lifting 400 pounds over your face anymore, Dusty. Look let's, at this. Let's, it was already know. bad. I don't need to make it worse. All right. What else <laughs> we got? Goodness. We got we got one or two more, Scott. We can bang through. Uh, we did have a couple. I wanted to ask you guys from Kenneth Kidd. He, he asked, uh, are you guys excited or anyone stoked? for Deadpool versus Wolverine. I don't know if you guys follow that stuff. Don't care. No. All right. No. All right. No. <laughs> I got another one. That's funny. We'll go straight into another one and shout out to you, Kenneth Kidd, for listening to the show. Uh, this is, I think this one takes us back a little bit. Okay. So a uh, question for the next episode. So Dante mentioned that he worked with Cedric back in 2009, and then he helped him with his, to get his arms to blow up. Um, would y'all, I like to say y'all have any idea on the split that Cedric was using for his arms. He thought Dusty might have some info. I don't know what he was doing. Um, and this is awful, but Dante did something with my arm training as well that I also don't know what it was. <laughs> I mean, I, I don't think uh, a lot of people that follow realize how long, you know, I mean, I worked with Dante for 12 years. Yeah. Like, so the amount of things that, that he has adjusted and we've done, even stuff on the fly, 
that he created just for me. That's why I wouldn't even, even if I knew what I, what I did, I would tell her what I did. I, it's not necessarily what Cedric did. That's what makes, that's what makes Dante so interesting to me uh, as someone who's just like a student of the game is he's got a way of stepping back from a situation. Um, and like he says, getting weird with it. Yeah. But it's not Instagram weird. It's not Charles Glass weird. And I'm going to take heat for that. But I think Charles sometimes just does stuff to make it weird so people will hire him. I, I see things and I'm like, that's absolutely not better. I don't care how you cut it. It's not. There's other things he does that I think are absolutely genius. But Dante will be like, hey, I want to try. And he'll write out a long explanation. And then I'll send a video back. I'm like, is this what we're talking about? And he's like, ah, no, alter this, this. And I find I'm like, oh, yeah, that's. Hmm. that's different. That's a different pain. I, I think we can run with this or I can progress with it, you know, and same thing with DC training. I think people need to realize that when he came out with that, it was a high volume world. And he just threw up a post. He's like, Oh, this is what I do. It's a little different. And it exploded. It wasn't <clears throat> unlike now where anytime you see somebody come out with their secret plan, it's got a name to it. They just want clout. It's not even about results. Um, and that's why he did so well. So what he would do for me and my uh, world-class physique versus Cedric's meh physique, probably not the same. <laughs> probably not the same. Uh, did I get the world-class backwards? I think I did. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> that's, his, that's his rapid-fire answer. All yeah. right. <clears throat> Got one more. Uh, might be controversial. This is from Georgina, by the way, over at Patreon. She says, this might be controversial, but interested in your opinions on virilized female competitors. Obviously, there are degrees to this um, and a whole fetish scene. But what about <clears throat> regular bodybuilding guys? Is it a turn on or a turn off? Mm. I think... Some guys probably don't want to admit stuff, so there's that. I don't know. I don't know. It's not, I, I, I'm at that age now where, like, I see, I see, like, beauty in, like, all different types of women. So it's like, I don't know. I don't know. I, I'm going to. I'm gonna uh, what do you say here? So here's the deal. And I, to me, I want to step it a little bit further back. <clears throat> and, right. and this is as a bodybuilder, as a male bodybuilder. Um, I don't care. And what I mean yeah, I is care. you, you shouldn't, you shouldn't care. I, and I, and I appreciate the question. I don't mean to be disrespectful, but like, if you are a female bodybuilder, yeah. um, I didn't get into bodybuilding to pick up chicks. I was very clear and, and, you know, <laughs> yeah, not, certainly not a help. single, <laughs> yeah, yeah. not a single helped. woman that I've been with was, was like, because I was big. In fact, I, I always ask, cause I like to just, I'm curious, like, what is your thing? Nikki pref would prefer me fatter than I am now. Like, that's just her thing. She, she thinks it's a better look than abs, you know, right. all my exes before smaller that I could wear better looking clothes. Like, so my, my point is, and, and this is something I say in reverse for guys, because, um, contrary to our egos, women don't make every move they make for us. Yeah. And the quicker that men and women can just do what you want to do, the better. Because, you know, when you find the guy that's interested in you, whether it's because you have those attributes or he doesn't care because he likes you for what you are, you found the winner. And anyone who doesn't, you know, if I was single and they're like, oh, it's gross at your Bible, I'm like, well, I'm glad we got that out of the way. Yeah. Move on. You know what I mean? So, yeah, yeah. um, there's obviously fetishes for things like that, but you know, my answer is simple. Um, when Nikki, for example, when we got together, she was training kind of mom for sure and living life. And that's how we connected. And now she's getting ready for a bodybuilding show. She was never going to do. And I don't yeah. care what happens when it's over. Like when you, yeah. when you're with someone who's what you, you know, your person, you don't care what they do. You know, I mean, I know that Emily was waiting for Ron to get, back into flatland but she had to put in the time <laughs> put in the put time, in the time. <laughs> yeah she's never cared um it, it's funny i have a friend who's who who married a like like serious hardcore female bodybuilder right yeah. she's retired now but he he married her and he was never in to big chicks or bodybuilder chicks ever like he he remembers like thinking oh i'm not into that at all i'm not into that at all 
And then, you know, he spent 10 years, 15 years in the gym and uh, winds up meeting this, this chick who happens to be a hardcore bodybuilder and they just like, they're a perfect match. And now he's married to her and then like, she still kept competing for a few years after that. And he's like, oh man, she looks so awesome. Like he's got right yeah. into it. Yeah. And, and so it's just like, it's, it's just, you know, I don't know. It's, it, it comes down to the person and you know, like if you're right for somebody, you'll be right for somebody. And it's just, yeah. I mean, who cares? You know what? We need a lot of different people out there to make the world interesting. So you yeah, know, don't, don't alter I, anything you want to do. Yeah. As a, as a goal for, uh, for getting someone because you're, you're already off, you know, like you, you, you go altering your, your goals as a bodybuilder because you want this guy, then you get him, then you break up and you can't go back. Like the bodybuilding's over, you know? Yeah. So yeah. yeah. Other, anything for anybody that, that really <laughs> made me think that the other way around, like you said, dusty, like you, girls aren't in girls, aren't out there. A lot of girls at least aren't out there looking for guys because they're as massive as possible. Two yeah. things. Number one, so we're putting out reels on YouTube, we get a different demographic of people that are just watching reels, you know? And we had somebody comment on one of our reels who's not a follower of ours or anything. And it was something about like getting huge or taking gear or something. I can't remember what the reel was about, but it had something to do with hardcore bodybuilding. And the guy's comment was something like, I can't, I don't want to say the B word because I don't know how YouTube feels about that. But you could imagine him using it. He was like, you know, girls don't, Girls don't even oh. care. Girl, yeah, girls don't even want guys that are that big. So why do you even care about doing this stuff? I like yeah, I didn't right. even comment back to him. So that was one thing. And I remember getting into like deciding, making the decision in my late twenties, like, okay, this is what I'm gonna do. And going from like very small, like I was 115 to 125 pounds, not a big guy at all. And um I remember people telling me like you know girls don't really find that attractive and girls yeah. i knew girls i, I remember knew that, that were like you know yeah. I, I really don't I'm like girl i'm not dating told me like oh you know i'm not i'm i don't find that attractive i don't know why you'd want to do that and it's like yeah. they don't say that anymore <clears throat> you know you reach a point where you get so far into the community of bodybuilding that it's like you just always feel small no matter what <laughs> no matter <laughs> yeah, what yeah, it's but it's it's normal you know i I don't know about you guys, but I have a hard time anymore. And this is kind of segueing. I have a hard time seriously telling if people can lift weights in public or not. Like if somebody right. is walking around in the store, I can't tell if they are like big unless they are like freaking Phil Heath big. Right. But it, like they have to be really big for me to be like, oh, that guy's a bodybuilder. And it's not that I'm like jaded or I just don't. I literally I don't see it. Yeah. That's funny. Yeah, it, it all twists. But I love that you said that, Scott, because it's very true. Like you were told that you're like, yeah, I didn't get into, I yeah. didn't decide to bodybuild to pick up chicks. But in reverse, uh, a lot of men make those comments to women. Yeah. Why would you do that? Like, oh, even like, more, even more. Because I like bodybuilding, moron. Yeah. <laughs> like you, you were never an option. Don't worry. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. It's a good question. It's a good question. Yeah, we could go for hours, and that—that that was not a great addition to the rapid fire. No, but Especially we did power through. We did power through uh, all the questions. <laughs> Dusty, you had some more that we'll have to save. I'm going to make a yeah, list, yeah. so we'll hold on to because you put up your your question thread, and people should go over to your Instagram too. Well, it's gonna, this is going to be over by the time it's that gone. Happens. Never mind. But we do them all Never the mind. time. Yeah, we'll get more. Oh. Uh, show note, I should have mentioned this at the beginning. Guys, I figured out how to do video on Spotify. So now our, if you're watching the show or listening to the show on Spotify, it also, in addition, is video as well, just like Joe Rogan and everything else like that. Donna wanted cool. to say hi. What's up, hey, Donna? Donna. There hey, she Donna, is. What's up? Putting on the, we just got so many more hits because she came. She just came down the yeah. stairs for a quick hello. All right, Don, so you got to go. Okay. Okay. Well, good to see you guys. Remember to like, share, subscribe, comment, and ring the bell. There we go, guys. Remember, imutant.com, 20% off, Dusty 20, Big Ron 20. Get your all in, get your ISO surge, and everyone should get on the gear. That's it, eh, gentlemen? Hey, yes, sir. There you go. Hey. Okay, excited for the Arnold. How long do we actually go again? Real soon. Next week. Real soon. It's After like next show week, comes right? out, it'll be yep. like a week and a day or so. Damn, it's coming. I look forward to seeing you guys. We got to have a little uh, meet up about what we're going to do. Yes. Yes. You know, yes. Do some, Scott said something about a training video, so I'm down. Yeah, I want to do some sort of, I'm going to shoot as much video as I can 
and okay. uh, I want to try to get like Dusty. I I know you. We you should used all go to. train. Yeah, especially yes. like you know I don't know if you guys do like morning training before the expo if that's your normal thing, but we'll figure. We don't, but we have to. Okay, <laughs> not not Maybe that or late. But, yeah. Okay. okay. <laughs> We'll okay. figure something okay. out then. It's going to be a ton of video. Okay. You guys are all going to see it on YouTube too. Okay. We we'll see you guys. Remember, it's just bodybuilding. <laughs>